All right, let's uh, let's move into the Fresno State Bulldogs, and of course, taking over Fresno State this year, Jeff Tedford. He is back. Uh, he retired uh, due to medical issues not that long ago, and Kalen DeBoer took over, ran the ship for two years, got him to nine and three, and then uh, won a bowl game last year, so ten and three. And, uh, and now Tedford is back. Kalen DeBoer has uh, has moved on over. He is uh, coaching at Washington now, but he does leave behind uh, quarterback Jake Hayner, running back Jordan Mims, wide receiver Jalen Cropper. Uh, the defense is pretty good. Like if you if you talked about this team last year, you probably wouldn't have talked much about the defense. But man, with guys like uh, Evan Williams, the safety, and the defensive end David Perales, um, I mean they, they are they're going to be pretty good on defense again. I think. Uh, even with that, you know, they are missing defensive end Aaron Mosby and the cornerback Darren Bland, but uh, but they, I think they're going to be pretty good. Like this, this looks like a fun team. Uh, they're losing the running back Ronnie Rivers, uh, wide receiver Kirik Wheatfall, uh, and then of course the right tackle. Let's uh, let's let's hit on the offense first here. DeBoer left, but he was the OC at Fresno under Tedford. Uh, and then, of course, with Tedford back, I would imagine having Hayner back. Everything's going to look the same. Yeah, they're going to look the same. They've got a ton of playmakers and a pretty good offensive line here. The explosive play rate could possibly stand to be improved. Uh, they were number 81 uh, in explosive plays on offense. It, it may, they, might get, uh, they might get better at that, having Jordan Mims be the premier back instead of Ronnie Rivers. Um, he's just like he's a utility back. He's really, really good at – can the offensive line fix their, you know, rushing success rate? I mean, they were number 50 last year. It, it's still pretty good, uh, but they were number eight in passing success rate. So if Hayner is dealing, I mean, why mess with it, right? Why mess with it? Uh, offense is pretty good, and I would imagine it will continue to be under Tedford. Uh, on the defense, it didn't feel great, like I said, but, man, they were number 18 in defensive PPA per drive last year, and that is elite. Like, they are really good. Uh, they need to limit the explosive play rate on this side. Uh, they were number 96. They they gave up a ton of explosive plays, uh, you know, per the number of plays that they actually ran. Uh, the linebacker and the secondary uh, positions are loaded, absolutely loaded with talent. Defensive line lost four of the six players that got at least 225 snaps. But they do have Stanford defensive end Joshua Picola coming in as a transfer. And then, of course, like I mentioned, uh, the defensive end Perales is a star. Um Man, give me give me your ideas here. Like I, I'm curious uh, your uh, your initial impressions. Yeah, almost the yin to the yang of of um, San Diego State for these first two teams. Got yes. them eight and four as well, and I uh, I think it's going to be uh, good offense, improved defense, um, and uh, well maybe not improved because they were pretty damn good in some some areas. I, I just think they're going to I don't know I think they're going to be better. Um, and, and yeah, I like, I like this team. I like that they kept most everybody around, you know, normally when a coach, a G5 coach leaves for a P5 job, you know, their first instinct is to think, well, I've got a bunch of studs at the place I'm at now. They got me the job. Let's bring a bunch of them on. Um, and it usually doesn't work out well because just because you're a great G5 player doesn't mean you're a monster uh, P5 player. True. And uh, and so I think it was smart for either of these guys to stay where they were at and or for him to not bring them over to the Pac-12. But, I, of course, A, I'd rather live in, you know, uh, Fresno than, than live in Seattle right now. So I, I agree. I agree. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think if you're talking about where I got to live and get to play football, give me, give me, uh, give me Fresno uh, over that. Um, and uh, so, anyway, no, I, I like this team. I think Tedford's going to be just fine. And uh, and they're gonna they're gonna win a lot of ball games. I think their schedule sets up absolutely brilliantly. Like it, this is, it, you could not have asked. Are for you it. thinking double digits? I am think I've got them at ten and two. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I think the schedule is brilliant, and and that's with them starting one and two. Now, would it shock me if yeah. they go nine and three, eight and four? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, my keys to the season here is let Hainer cook. Don't change the offense that ran last season much. Develop the offensive line because the rushing PPA was number 111 last season. Their success rate was good, uh, but their predicted points added was was not great. Um, develop the defensive line quickly. Make sure and keep the havoc rate up. They were number 28 in the FBS last season in havoc rate. Uh, if you can find a way to limit explosive passes, that would certainly help. 
Uh, the secondary, you know, is it looks a little more stacked this year than it did last season. They were number 117 in explosive passes uh, allowed last year. So well, you want to improve that. So my, my thought on this is, is so on this side of, of the football, on this side of the conference, I guess I should say, um, styles make fights. And the, and the team I think that you're going to be matched up against for this division, I believe, is San Diego State. And if you're going to be weak anywhere, and that's your biggest opponent, you want to be weak in the secondary because that's not a threat for them. Exactly. So, so that's that's why that's why I I, I, I you know I, I do like Fresno, and I kind of made that a coin flip game. Uh, the reason I've got I've got the other team, San Diego, is uh, at, at maybe nine, and, and but definitely eight is because I. I don't know that they win this game. This is the coin flip game for both of them. Well, this the San Diego State game is in Fresno this year. Uh, listen to the way that the schedule shapes up, all right? You got Cal Poly, and then you've got Oregon State and at USC. Now, I could, I've got them losing both of those. But then yeah, you've I got to... Because I think Oregon State's much, much improved. Yes, agreed. So, starting off one and two, and then you've got a bye week. You play at UConn. They've got six away games. But the away games, uh, with with USC being one of them, obviously that hurts. Probably going to lose that one. You got at UConn, then at Boise, which I've got them winning that game. They could certainly lose it. Uh, but after that, you've got San Jose State at home, at New Mexico, San Diego State at home, Hawaii at home, at UNLV, at Nevada, and Wyoming. Your away games are USC, UConn, Boise, New Mexico, UNLV, and Nevada. Like yeah, I but could, you're just not sweet. You're just not sweeping at home. Like you, this is where you and I always have this conversation. I don't chalk up W's because of home home and away games. I just don't. I, it, it never seems to work out that way. Oh, agreed, it agreed. Just doesn't. But I, I look at it as the ones that they're playing at home don't necessarily scare me a lot either. Like San Jose State could be pretty good, maybe, uh, well, but they're yeah, losing a bunch too. So the, the argument is Fresno State and San Diego, uh, and San Jose State. Like those are the two teams that are going to challenge them. Right? We agree on that, right? Well, like. Uh, uh, we're talking what San Diego State and do we think San Jose State's going to compete? Well, in comparison to Nevada, I do. Well, most certainly, right? That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. They get New Mexico, so, like, UNLV, on, and on Nevada. This, so, so on this side of the ball, on this side of the division, they've got one real threat and one possible threat in yeah. those two teams. All right, but just because you get those two threats at home, doesn't mean we can just talk that up to a W. I no, just, no, you're right. I, that's why I call them coin flip games. I do think they're better than San Jose State. That's why I have them beating them. But I don't, I'm not just giving them the win at Fresno, and I'm not just giving Fresno, I mean San Diego, and I'm not just giving San Diego that win. Agreed. So. Absolutely agreed. Uh, but to to say that the schedule did not set up well uh, would be a farce, I think. This schedule no, it does. Is, I mean, yeah. I started this with some of these teams have a have, have scheduled very nicely. Oh, yes. So. Oh, Yes. They, they definitely did. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.